All right, y'all, so it's Firewood Friday. As you can see behind and here, Nikki is getting us more firewood. So Wednesday this week, we did uh, load five of firewood, and I have spent the last couple days splitting enough firewood to make my shoulders and arms definitely feel it. So I've almost caught up with load five, and we're getting load six. So she's taking care of the first tree with her Echo and all of her gear on, so safety first. And we will get this loaded up and get load six of firewood home. So when we were up here Wednesday, it started to kind of sleet and snow. Today it's kind of done a little bit of sleet and it's starting to gonna rain this weekend and get some snow. So if you look on some of the passes in Oregon, they're getting upwards of 10 inches of snow already. So let's just say winter, winter's not playing this year. It's coming hard. So we are going heavy and this will make halfway on the load of wood to get to where we want to be. Okay, so we're still cutting out here, but I thought I'd take a minute and talk about strategy. If you know me and you've watched any of the other videos, you know I'm an engineer and I am all about strategy and time and effort. Not necessarily goes to homestead, but homesteading really is about doing what you can do as fast as you can do it. Because right now, like for us, winter's coming. So as you see, Nikki's back there cutting on trees. And if you look behind all the way out there, there's a lot of wood out here. So for us, for a strategy, there's two things I'm looking for. First is going to be that I'm looking for stuff that's gonna be the driest. So the stuff that she is cutting now has fallen and has been lifted up off the ground by branches. So she's able to limb that off and donate it up quickly, which means it's gonna be dry. Anything laying on the ground typically is gonna have a lot more moisture in it, which is gonna be a lot harder to cut, a lot harder to split, and it may have to dry for a full year before it's really to the core dry and able to be split. Second thing is I'm looking for diameter. So for me, anything, if we can quickly get anything that's probably about arm diameter, maybe let's say three to four inches, that is something that you may have to split once or not split at all and it'll go right in the pile and in. So very quickly done. Second piece is I'm looking for stuff less than about eight inches in diameter because if it's dry, typically it's gonna be two hits. Split it in half, sorry, three. Split it in half and then split the two pieces in half. So I'm looking forward to doing it quickly and as fast as possible. If it's larger than say eight inches, maybe up into 12 and 14, it's got to be dry because it's got to be something you can hit with one or two splits and be done and get it in the bin. If you're going to do upwards of 12 truckloads a year like we do, it's all about time and effort. And fooling with too much just makes it a horrible process to deal with. All right, so with the six load of wood brought home, we're starting to split. So I've got a big pile here that's brought down from the uh, splitting place. You can see bin number one is done and two is started so it's about 18 inches off the ground now the goal is to get that filled and then to get number three filled so it's gonna be a long journey so we got at least six more loads to go but uh, i'll take you outside and show you kind of where i'm splitting and where uh, nikki is transporting back and forth to when she's dumping it up here all right so now here's where i split from so you can see i've got two axes out here one is a little heavier on the head which is my primary splitting axe. And a secondary one is if I bury the first one bad enough, I need a second axe that I can then just use it to kind of split the wood, get my primary out. This is what's left right here of load six. So I'm gonna try and get that done today before chores. And then this is my pile that I basically split, toss aside. And if you hear the tractor in the back, that's Nikki bringing up the tractor to load up wood into the tractor bucket, take it back down to the house. So we split kind of out past the barns because you know it gets so messy and it can be kind of a fire hazard once it starts to build up. So we've got it out past the barns. You can see one of the barns in the trailer and out. So this is kind of towards the front of our property off to the side with uh, about by our well. So this takes care of that for us. And I think I'm gonna try and finish this up today if I can get it before chores. And then tomorrow, taking a rest day, trying to uh, let the backs uh, heal up in that. So. That may be it for this time, but uh, Nikki is almost out of canning, thankfully. She is uh, getting pretty close. She's got a last bit of tomatoes to do, and then um, she got some really awesome sauce coming in. So 
that'll be it we got some potatoes left and uh, i think that's it for this week just kind of letting you know where we're at and on firewood so if you guys have any questions on anything we're doing drop us a line otherwise that's it for this week on Sprague River Homestead. See you next time. Well,